Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Uh, Professor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have seen the case for uh, two lotteries or three lotteries, but what if, if there are um, more number of lotteries, like uh, any arbitrary in number of lotteries, then... Uh, then you can generalize what I've said uh, uh, in a straightforward manner. So uh, it's always a combined lottery is always a linear combination of uh, uh, the simple lotteries, and uh, it always uh, results uh, in, a, um, um, in a simple lottery where the, the, that will lie inside uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the polygon that is identified by the uh, uh, simple lotteries. Thank okay. you. Yeah, so professor. Yeah. So um we can so we could so we could uh express the same thing by an m times n matrix, right? Uh yes, so so the uh, yes, that's the, the, the generalization I mean. Yes, yeah, so so the the as you have seen the there is this pnk which uh, which is uh, which is essentially um, a matrix, and uh, and yes, so so you you can write it in the matrix form. So um, um, so and can yes, this sort of yeah can this sort of uh, algebra way of looking at it be useful in a particular way that. Yes, yeah, essentially, this is essentially all linear algebra. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, can I go ahead? So, let me look in the chat uh, if there are uh, questions. Uh, where is the chat? Yeah. Okay, so. Would each of the combined lotteries have the uh, uh, same number of outcomes in general? Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, all the lotteries uh, mm -hmm. are defined uh, on the same uh, uh, space of uh, um, all the uh, lotteries are defined on the same space of outcomes. Uh, it's always defined on this set uh, C. So all the lotteries have the same outcomes. Of course, uh, some of the lot of these lotteries that I'm combining can have uh, uh, zero probability for some of the outcome. So, uh, in general, each of the uh, uh, lotteries that I, I combine will have uh, 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 a subset of uh, possible outcome that eventually includes the, the, the full set uh, C of all outcomes. Uh, uh, so, uh, do combined lotteries share uh, some properties with Dirichlet processes? Well, I think they are much simpler than uh, uh, Dirichlet processes. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a very simple notion. Can LK depend on more than one probability other than alpha K? Yes, of course. Uh, say now that uh, we have uh, find out that we can uh, combine lotteries and get uh, another lottery, we can combine combined lotteries and get another lottery. So any combination of lotteries will give you a lottery. And uh, so you, you can uh, uh, define uh, uh, as complicated. Uh, uh, so this, this combination is a, is a is, a, is an operation that you define on the space of lottery. And this will be uh, very important uh, for uh, uh, what we are going to discuss now. Okay, so let me resume uh, and uh, go ahead uh, with the uh, um, defining uh, uh, preferences. Okay, so uh, the way in which uh, uh, we define uh, uh, preferences uh, is based on uh, axioms. Axioms are uh, simple uh, 
requirement that uh, look like, uh, um, say, uh, natural requirements. So the first one is that uh, we are going to require that uh, whatever uh, 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 preference relation we define on combined lotteries is going to be the same on the set uh, on the corresponding reduced lotteries. So that it is enough to define uh, the preference relation on simple lotteries. So this also means that uh, um, uh, we are assuming that uh, uh, a, an agent uh, uh, with these preferences will be indifferent between a combined lottery and the corresponding reduced lottery. Okay. So this is uh, looks like a, a, a very innocent uh, assumption. But actually, uh, it is less innocent than, than uh, it looks. Okay. But it looks like a natural uh, requirement. Okay. Second thing, uh, uh, second axiom that we are going to assume is uh, the axiom of continuity. So, continuity, I mean, the best way to give you an intuition of what continuity means uh, without entering into too much uh, uh, mathematical detail is imagine that you have three lotteries and that uh, 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 lottery L1 uh, is at least as good as L2 and at least as good as L3. Sorry, uh, this should be in the reverse order, okay? So this lottery L1 is at least as good as L2. Ah, uh, uh, oh, no, sorry. So this is in the right order, okay? And L3 is, in, uh, is at least as good as L1 and L2 two is at least as good as L3. So then uh, there is a, so continuity means uh, that uh, there will be a combined lottery between L1 and L2, such that uh, 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 L uh, is equivalent to L3 in the sense that uh, uh, L, uh, um, uh, so the, the agent uh, uh, with these preferences would be indifferent between L and L3, okay? So this implies that, uh, say, uh, the, this uh, set of lotteries between L and L2 are the lotteries which are at least, uh, um, sorry, between L1 and L are the set of lotteries which are at least as good as L3. And, uh, and those between L and L2 are those uh, uh, for which L3 is at least as good as all these, okay? And essentially these sets are closed sets, okay? So this is uh, uh, continuity. Now, continuity is, uh, looks like uh, also an innocent assumption, but it has a lot of uh, a very strong consequence. And one of them is that essentially, uh, uh, if uh, uh, preferences over lotteries uh, are uh, uh, satisfy this axiom of continuity, then uh, you can represent uh, these uh, uh, preferences by an utility function, okay? Which means that uh, for any two lotteries, if one is at least as good as the other, then the utility of the first should be at least as large as the utility of, of, of the other one. Okay, so, um, so this, uh, you have to think a little bit about it, but uh, it's uh, uh, really a, a, a straightforward and direct consequence of uh, the axiom of continuity. So the uh, third uh, axiom that you are going to uh, uh, impose is uh, uh, the independence axiom. And this also looks like a, a reasonable uh, assumption, uh, assumption to make. So uh, we say that a preference relation over lottery satisfies the independent axiom if, uh, however you define these three lotteries, if uh, lottery L1 is at least as good as L2, then when you combine lottery L1 with L3, 
the combination will be at least as good as the same combination with the same weight when you take lottery L2. Okay, so uh, and this should be true for any uh, alpha that you choose between uh, zero and one. Now, this is uh, uh, really uh, very strong consequences. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you, ask, if you take these three axioms, then uh, what uh, uh, the, the consequence of this uh, is that the preference relation must be uh, must have a representation in terms of a utility function that has the expected utility form. So this means uh, that there must be numbers uh, un such that uh, the expected value of every lottery is just uh, the expected value of this uh, u under the probability of the lottery. And what is this u? Uh, well, this U is, uh, uh, is essentially uh, the utility of a lottery that gives you outcome N with probability one, okay? So why is this so? Well, this is so because uh, the independence axiom essentially tells you uh, that uh, this lottery, so if you prefer lottery L1 to L2, then you should prefer this lottery here which is the uh, combination of L1 with L3 to this lottery here, which is the combination of L2 with L3, okay? And uh, now the same notion can also be uh, extended to indifference. So if you are indifferent between L1 and L2, then you should be indifferent uh, between these two combined lotteries, okay? And so what this tells you is that, uh, um, uh, what this tells you is that uh, the indifference lines, the lines uh, over which you are uh, uh, indifferent between lotteries should be straight line and should all be parallel straight lines, okay? And uh, this is precisely the type of uh, indifference curves uh, that you have uh, with unexpected utility because uh, just simply because it is uh, linear. Okay. So, um, so it is clear that uh, unexpected utility uh, will have indifference curves uh, that are parallel straight lines, but the converse uh, is also true. I mean, if you, if you have a preference uh, relation over lotteries that satisfies independence axiom, then the uh, uh, indifference curves must be straight line, parallel straight line, which means that there must be a utility function that corresponds, that represents this uh, uh, preference relation. Now, this also tells you uh, how uh, you, you can uh, experimentally measure uh, utility functions uh, uh, these this, uh, numbers UN by making experiments, okay? And uh, uh, well, this is uh, discussed in, in, the, in the lectures, but essentially you do different experiments until you find uh, utility functions, uh, lotteries over which uh, the individual is indifferent. Uh, and then you know that uh, the utility function, the, 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 the preference relation should be a straight line, uh, as the indifference curve should be straight lines passing through these two points. And um, okay, so uh, it's again a good time to uh, stop for uh, questions. And um, so is everything uh, clear? So could you show uh, like two slides, I mean, slides again? Yes, I can show again the slides. Um, so yes. this one? Uh, uh, one more, I think. Uh, next one? No, no, yeah, yeah sorry. 
Sure. By the way, this uh, result here is called the expected uh, utility theorem. Yeah, so I had the question on this only. I mean, uh, does it uh, like imply that you will have this kind of uh, expected utility form? Like if all three axioms, I mean, is it necessary? Yes, it's necessary and sufficient. So uh, the, if you have this three axiom, you have this three axiom, if and only if uh, the preference uh, can be represented as an expected utility form in an expected utility form. Okay, and this expected, this expected utility form says that uh, the ind indifference curves will be straight lines. Yes, will be straight lines. Uh, with, uh, I mean, this, uh, this, is, this you can easily check, no? Because if you take uh, um, uh, two different lotteries, uh, uh, and uh, you make, uh, um, uh, say, if you make, if you take two different lotteries, okay, imagine that you take lottery L1 and L2, and you are indifferent between them. Then yeah. uh, you can combine these two lotteries into another lottery, uh, which will be on this uh, straight line, okay? And uh, because this is a combined lottery, then you will be indifferent between L1, L2, and this new combined lottery. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So, other questions? So, no other questions? Is everything clear? Okay, so this is uh, uh, a very important uh, result. So, okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead. Okay, so now the question is, uh, um, does uh, this uh, expected utility really uh, describes uh, how real people behave? Well, there's been a number of uh, paradoxes uh, that have been uh, 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 discussed uh, uh, that show that uh, in uh, uh, particular situations, uh, uh, people uh, do not really behave uh, uh, in the way that uh, the expected utility uh, would uh, recommend. Okay, so. So take this example, for example. So here is a, a, a situation where uh, you are asked whether you prefer uh, lottery L1 to L1 prime. So L1 is the lottery that gives you C2 with probability one. But let's say that C2 is half a million dollars. Okay, so lottery, lottery L1 gives you uh, half a million dollars. Whereas lottery L1 prime gives you uh, uh, with probability 89% uh, uh, gives you two million and a half uh, with probability, uh, with 10% probability gives you half a million, but with probability 1% gives you zero. Okay, and typically if you, well, if you ask uh, to people uh, uh, which of these two lotteries they prefer, well, uh, many people prefer to get uh, the half a million for sure. Okay, because uh, in lottery L prime, L1 prime, there is a small risk, 1% uh, uh, that you will get nothing, okay? Now think about uh, a second question uh, uh, where essentially you are asked uh, whether uh, uh, you want, uh, prefer, you prefer lottery L2, uh, which gives you uh, zero probability of uh, uh, C1 with uh, uh, probability 11% uh, 
to get half a million and 89% uh, to get zero. And then uh, uh, see whether this is preferred to a lottery L2 prime, where instead you get uh, with probability, uh, with 10% probability, you get uh, uh, two and a half millions. And with probability 90%, you get uh, uh, zero. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> typically, uh, what say what people uh, would choose between these two lotteries uh, is probably lottery L2 prime because, uh, uh, well, because uh, you have a 10% probability uh, of winning two and a half millions. Um, as compared to 11% probability of winning uh, uh, just half a million, okay? However, uh, this behavior here is inconsistent uh, with this behavior here according to the expected utility. And why? Because essentially, uh, if, uh, um, if you prefer uh, lottery L1 to L1 prime, then you should prefer L2 to L2 prime. And why is this so? Because if you do the math, you figure out that uh, uh, the points, the, the, the lines that join these two uh, curve, uh, these two lotteries, L1 and L1 prime, and L2 and L2 prime, they are parallel lines, okay? So whatever is uh, the expected utility that you are using, the indifference curves will always be parallel straight lines, okay? So however you draw these parallel straight lines, then uh, you should always have a preference relation where uh, if L1 is preferred to L1 prime, then L2 should be preferred to L2 prime, okay? I hope this is, uh, 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 this is clear. If you want, I can uh, just uh, try to uh, make a... Uh, um... So if your indifference curve, for example, uh, is in this direction, there are parallel lines in these directions, then, uh, uh, and they increase, uh, say, uh, downward, then it is clear that uh, uh, if you prefer L1 to L1 prime, then uh, you should also prefer, should prefer L2 to L2 prime. This is because this, uh, the utility, and no matter uh, how you uh, change your utility, how you change these uh, uh, the, the straight lines, whatever the straight lines are, you will always either choose uh, uh, L1 and L2 or L1 prime and L2 prime. Okay, so this is uh, just one of uh, the uh, paradoxes uh, of, um, say, uh, choice under uncertainty. There are other paradoxes uh, uh, that uh, also tells you that uh, um, uh, somehow uh, uh, one can distinguish between uh, what is called risk and what is called uh, say, through uncertainty. Uh, so risk is when uh, you know what are the probabilities. Uncertainty is when uh, you don't know what are the probabilities. Okay, so, and there are paradoxes uh, that tell you that uh, uh, when you have uncertainty on the probabilities, then uh, uh, this expected utility, even though you can define a probability distribution over the uncertainty, uh, still uh, the expected utility uh, paradigm uh, runs into problems, okay? I'm not going to, into all these details. Uh, uh, these are discussed uh, uh, in the book of Mascolel. I hope you can find uh, a, a copy in your library. This is uh, it's given in the reference in the website. Uh, but if you look at chapter six in Maskolen, uh, all these questions are discussed. So questions.
sir in the previous slide yeah um uh, like uh, can you explain why it has to be parallel line previously uh, why do i mean uh, did you uh, no, um, in slide after this uh, elias uh, paradox okay nice paradox yeah yeah here uh, like because you have chosen uh, l1 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 prime l2 l2 prime in a combination that gives us i mean uh, in uh, what is this uh, why are the parallel uh, yes the two green lines are parallel i mean is it because of the choice you made or like yes it is because of the choice uh, i made yes okay. and then uh, why do you say uh, that as you can see there are really extreme choice because uh, one of the pairs is close to this corner here and one of the pairs is close to this corner here okay yeah. so like uh, then uh, you say ki indifference curves are uh, perpendicular to this uh, no no they are not perpendicular what i'm saying uh, indifference curves uh, are straight lines they are parallel straight lines so whatever they are whatever is the orientation of indifference curves uh, consistency requires that if you choose l1 then you choose uh, should choose l2 uh, excuse me Yes. Uh, you said uh, we can find uh, similar uh, examples in chapter six. I uh, wasn't sure uh, what was the uh, source for that. Uh, which book you mean by that? It's the book of uh, Maskell, uh, uh, Winston, uh, and uh, and the third author, which is uh, mentioned uh, in the uh, website. Yes. Thank you. Excuse me, professor. Yes. So for each parallel line, we have a, a sort of orientation, and if we go in that direction, the utility increases. Is it? Uh, so no. Okay. So the. Um, so let me try to make. Uh, so if you. Um, so let's say. Uh, if you have a, a particular uh, say particular utility function uh, here would be uh, something uh, probably like this no because uh, uh, well this is uh, what you prefer the least uh, this is what you prefer the most uh, so maybe the indifference curve of the utility uh, would be like parallel lines in this direction okay like this okay with uh, um, the utility essentially increasing uh, in this direction here okay in this direction can you see the um, the figure yeah it's clear okay so but so the the, the what the expected utility theorem tells you or this three axiom tells you is that uh, the utility function uh, is that the preference uh, um, defined by the utility function always corresponds to uh, iso utility lines uh, or if you want uh, indifference curves uh, that are parallel straight lines okay okay perfect no no is clear okay. okay thank you very much Okay, and again, uh, uh, it is say it is easy to uh, if you want if you have a um, uh, uh, say uh, an individual that uh, is uh, um, making choice uh, over lotteries with unexpected utility. It is easy to uh, figure out what these two, what these lines are essentially, because essentially you just need to find two lotteries over which uh, the individual is indifferent, uh, and then you have to find in which direction, in which perpendicular direction, the utility increases. Okay. So indeed. Uh, 
so this expected utility is uh, um, uh, useful and these axioms are a useful formalization of how you would like uh, to design uh, a system that takes uh, uh, rational decisions, okay? So, because of course, well, you would like uh, that uh, if this uh, individual takes rational decisions, then you would like these three axioms uh, to be satisfied, okay? You, you would not like, uh, say, for example, that your preference relation has discontinuities in the sense that uh, uh, you uh, say prefer something to something else, but then if you make some, one of the options a little bit more risky, then uh, uh, your preference changes completely, okay? Uh, so you want continuity, you want uh, this uh, independence uh, uh, axiom, and also uh, you want that say combined lotteries uh, have a preference relation which is defined through the preference relation of simple lotteries. Okay. Okay. So uh, if there are no other questions, then uh, let me proceed. So. Um, Okay, so the last thing I want to discuss today is uh, uh, how do you define uh, risk, okay? Sorry, sir. Yeah? What is the conclusion of the last paradox? I mean, uh, is there any conclusion? I mean... Any conclusion? For the last paradox, you the paradox you mentioned. Yeah, so the, conc the, 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 the conclusion is that uh, if you want uh, uh, to design a system uh, that takes decision over uncertain outcomes uh, in a rational manner, then the expected utility is the way to go. But that uh, uh, real uh, people that we have, uh, I mean, uh, it may not, the expected utility may not be a good model for how real people behave, because there are some uh, special circumstances uh, where you can show that uh, it does not give uh, uh, reasonable uh, outcomes, okay? Like uh, the Allais paradox. Is this clear? Uh, but uh, like the Allais, Allais paradox came because we took, chose the individual to be rational, right? It's not because the individual is real. Yes, yes. So the, the Allais paradox uh, tells you that uh, the, the way in which a rational uh, uh, agent uh, would make decision in that situation is uh, uh, seems paradoxical from our psychological point of view, okay? But uh, so this means that uh, the expected utility in some situation does not uh, really describes uh, what, uh, uh, how we take decisions under, and, and there is a whole field of uh, behavioral economics uh, uh, that uh, is studying uh, what are, uh, I mean, what are the systematic deviations uh, of, uh, um, in the way in which uh, people take decisions with respect to the um, expected utility paradigm, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, okay, so uh, let's uh, discuss risk and in particular uh, uh, risk aversion. So. Now, one important point uh, is uh, that uh, when, uh, uh, when we discussed uh, uh, preferences uh, over simple outcomes without risk, what we said is that you can represent preferences with an utility function, but essentially that uh, uh, any uh, monotonic transformation of the utility function would correspond to the same uh, 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 preference relation. 
Now, this is uh, not so uh, in uh, uh, when you have risky, um, uh, when you have risk involved. And the reason uh, uh, why this is not so is that essentially the shape of uh, the expected utility will tell us uh, what is the propensity, what is the attitude towards risk of uh, the uh, individual with those preferences, okay? So let's see how this works. So, um, uh, so now let me consider that the set of uh, possible uh, uh, outcome is actually the real line, okay? And uh, so you can think uh, that the possible outcomes are monetary outcomes, are amount of money. You can think uh, as if we are discussing lotteries like uh, horse uh, lotteries, okay? So formally lotteries uh, are equivalent to real random variables. And then the expected utility is nothing but, uh, but the expectation value of the utility uh, computed uh, over this random variable. Not that uh, is just uh, the integral over the probability distribution of the utility uh, of the utility function. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> one interesting, one uh, uh, useful thing that you can do is to uh, define what is. Uh, 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 a lottery uh, that is a sure lottery that gives you with probability one this uh, the uh, expected value of uh, the utility function. Okay, so let me uh, put it uh, more clearly. So this L bar is a lottery such that uh, the utility of this lottery is equal to the expected value of uh, uh, the utility of the lot, the true lottery, okay? So you can, for every lottery, you can uh, um, define this lottery L bar, which is essentially the uh, uh, equivalent uh, certain lottery, okay? So now if this lottery L bar is preferred to the uh, lottery L, then you say, uh, that the individual is risk averse. Why is this? Because uh, uh, essentially this lottery L bar is a lottery that does not involve risk. You just get uh, uh, L bar with probability one. Instead, the lottery L gives you uh, as an outcome uh, a random variable X that can take uh, different values with different probabilities, okay? so. The difference between these two lotteries is that uh, essentially the lottery L involves risk and the lottery L bar does not involve risk, okay? So if you prefer the lottery that does not involve risk, then uh, uh, you are risk averse, okay? And uh, if instead uh, you prefer the risky lottery, the, the random lottery to the lottery L bar, then uh, you are called the uh, risk lover, okay? Now, it is easy to see that, uh, uh, and this is essentially a consequence of uh, Jensen's inequality, that uh, uh, risk aversion uh, occurs if and only if uh, uh, the U of X is concave, like in this, uh, uh, in this plot here, okay? Whereas uh, your risk lover only uh, even only if uh, the U of X uh, is uh, convex, so it is a uh, upward uh, curvature. Okay, so let's see this a uh, little bit more in detail. So um, one way to see this is uh, imagine that we have a lottery that uh, uh, can give only outcome X1 or X2 with probability say one half, then uh, the expected value of X will be this. Okay, you can compute what is the expected value, uh, what is the expected utility. So the expected utility uh, is uh, the uh, average of uh, these two points here, okay, with probability one half. 
So with probability one half, you have this point, which is u of x1. With probability one half, you have this point, which is u of x2. And you end up with this point, which is uh, the expected utility, okay? Now, this uh, is clearly less uh, than the utility of the expected value of x, uh, which correspond to this point here, okay? If this is the expected value of x, then this corresponds to this point, okay? So you see that in this case, and this uh, would be the utility of the lottery L bar, okay? Because the L bar gives you as an outcome, the expected value of X with probability one, okay? So this is the case of a risk averse uh, individual because uh, the difference uh, between uh, uh, the, the utility of the uh, lottery L bar and the expected utility of the lottery L is positive, okay? And you call this uh, difference the risk premium. So how much, uh, uh, so you call, say this, uh, uh, you call this, uh, yes, this, this difference uh, essentially is the, is the risk premium, okay? And um, uh, also you can uh, introduce what is called the certainty uh, equivalent. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, so, so you can introduce what is called the certainty equivalent, the C of L. And this is the value of X such that uh, the utility of this value of X is equal to the expected value of U. And if you go to this uh, graph, then you have to take this value of the expected value of u and uh, you compute uh, this uh, uh, value of C of L, okay? So you see that when uh, you are risk averse, this uh, uh, certainty equivalent is less than the expected value of X. So this difference is what you are uh, willing to pay in order to get rid of the risk, okay? And uh, yes, this is called uh, the risk premium, okay? This uh, the expected value of X minus uh, C of L. And uh, uh, so of course, uh, if you have instead uh, a utility function that has uh, the, opposite the opposite curvature that it goes like this, uh, then, uh, uh, then uh, all these relations uh, are inverse. Uh, in the sense that uh, the risk premium becomes uh, negative in the sense that you are willing to pay in order to um, uh, uh, play this lottery. And uh, if your utility function instead uh, is just a straight line, then uh, uh, the risk premium is exactly equal to zero. And, uh, and, and this is when uh, this utility functions are called uh, risk neutral, okay? Okay, I see there are a few questions on, uh, on the chat. So uh, let's, okay. Uh, okay, so yes, so, um, Uh, well, okay, lottery designers, uh, designers should design lotteries using expected utilities. Well, uh, um, um, say, uh, the, well, this is, say, a rational way of uh, designing lotteries. And uh, the other, con See, uh, when you think, really think about lotteries, uh, there are also other uh, uh, um, considerations that, uh, because essentially here we are considering lotteries uh, uh, that are just uh, uh, monetary outcomes, no? So if you think about uh, horse races, for example, these are lotteries where you buy you 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 buy a ticket in order to uh, 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 to run this lottery. Okay, 
uh, you, you buy a ticket uh, for a particular uh, horse uh, on a bet of a particular course, a horse. And now, of course, uh, uh, you can buy one ticket, two tickets, three tickets. So how much the ticket costs uh, uh, should take into account that uh, the number of tickets uh, that uh, uh, can be bought uh, uh, can be small or can be very large. And uh, so this is a slightly more complicated uh, problem and is very similar to the problem uh, in finance. In finance, uh, uh, what people have to do is to uh, decide what is the right price of an uh, asset that can be, uh, for example, uh, an insurance contract. But once you publish this price, uh, then uh, uh, people can buy as much as they want of this uh, asset. Okay, so uh, the the way in which uh, we will discuss uh, at the end of the course how you fix prices in that case. But more or less, uh, um, uh, the I mean the, the same type of concept uh, uh, entered in play. Okay, there, is, there was a, a discussion on Jensen's inequality and it has been quali uh, uh, clarified for, uh, um, uh, then there is a question on the mass Collel book, uh, yes, which has been answered. So very good. Um, so other questions? Hello, Professor, can you uh, come to the slide? Yes, and then, uh, yes. Uh, one more back. Uh, yeah, this fourth point, what does it like, what is saying? Like, what is this physical fourth one? Yeah, L bar lottery. Yes, this one, so yeah. essentially this lottery L, L bar uh -huh. is the lottery uh, uh, such that uh, the utility of this lottery is equal to the expected value of u of n. So it's a lottery, yes, it's, it's, it's a lottery that gives uh, this outcome with probability one. Like sure success kind of thing or like what? Sorry? Like with probability one means what? Like, uh, means it is sure event kind of, right? If you do this lottery, yes. this event is sure. It's sure, yes. It's not a random lottery, it's, it's a, it's a, just a lottery that gives you something with probability one. Okay. 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 Um, is is L bar like a delta function that speak that? Yeah, you can think of it as a as a lottery that uh, as a probability distribution, which is a delta function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, professor. Yes. Okay. So I think uh, uh, our time is over. So I thank you very much. So, uh, and well, on the website, you will find a little bit more about this subject. Uh, you, uh, I mean, there is a discussion of, uh, if you think about um, uh, utilities, uh, utility functions, uh, uh, the utility function which have particular properties of uh, risk aversion and um, and you can uh, given a certain utility function you can uh, ask yourself uh, whether this describes uh, risk averse uh, risk uh, neutral and how this risk aversion changes uh, with uh, with amount x okay but I think uh, uh, the, the main concepts uh, are the one uh, we described now. Okay, so our next, next lecture will be next week. Yes? Yeah, may, may I ask you one question? Yes, please. Yes, um, okay. Risk, risk advert have the function like concave because, okay, according with Jensen, but because the, the investor or the, or the person who is defined this utility will be received 
uh, a risk will be benefit for for the risk free, right? Because of the risk free that it is expected to to receive, right? It's a premium risk. Sorry for the premium risk, right? Uh... Because this is risk adverse, and it will be probably lose or probably get with uncertainty. We and yes, this is so, a very high risk, risk right? Yes, and so, we, so essentially, so if you are risk averse, you are willing to pay in order to get rid of the risk. And this is what you do when you buy an insurance. Okay, okay. so, so your, uh, I mean, you, you can get an accident uh, with your car and uh, you may lose the value of your car. So you go to the insurance company and you get an insurance. And I'm so sure. This means that uh, if it doesn't happen, then uh, when well, you have, uh, but if it happens, uh, then uh, the insurance company will pay uh, for your car. Okay. For my car, okay. Yes. But say, and, and so you are choosing uh, to pay something which is uh, uh, not random, which is sure, mm -hmm. which is the insurance premium mm -hmm. to cover you about uh, a, a, a lottery. In this case, a lottery which can have uh, uh, negative outcomes for you. Negative outcomes. Um, out, outcomes for me. Okay, that was in my risk premium is negative. No, the risk premium is positive because it, uh, it refers to the concavity of the curve. Okay, the concavity of yes. the curve. Okay, and, and, and what is the relation with this normalization distribution in the concavity? In close to the line of the normalization graphic uh, sorry uh, is the is the slide the slide on the is reset there j dancing oh sorry 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 let me get uh, uh, to the slides uh, so uh, you mean this graph <laughs> Uh, yes, because this, yeah, this is the normalization graph, and then this is the concave graphic that is the James inequality. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the normalization graphic of distribution, this is the utility function. No, yes. So the, the black line uh, is meant to be the utility function. The yellow line is meant to be the probability density function. But mm. I mean, this, uh, this can be anything. I mean, so it's anything. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. So uh, let's take a, a 10 minutes break uh, before uh, joining Guido. Uh, 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 second lecture. So I'll uh, assign you to breakout rooms in a random uh, way. Okay. See you later.
Ok, Guido, are you there? Presente. Uh, very good. So people are joining back. Uh, um,